Today, before we start our topic that is the relationship between continuous and discrete time signals, we will just briefly go through some of the examples that we had taken up last time. Uh, if you remember the last problem that we took was a sequence which was symmetric. Okay. It is like minus 1 plus 2 minus 3 again plus 2 and minus 1. It is symmetric about this central point. Okay. So, if you consider the signal from the origin, then we are asked to compute some of these quantities like this one and then angle of x omega and so on, integral minus pi to plus pi x omega d omega and so on. Now, you can see first one x a to the power j 0 by putting omega equal to 0, what we get is summation of these terms minus 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 2 minus 1, which gave us minus 1. Then angle of x omega while computing this, there was a little bit of confusion and I deliberately did not mention about the starting point. See the first one is minus 1, if I pair them minus 1 into 1 plus a to the power minus j 4 omega. Okay. So, that can be written as if I take a to the power minus j 2 omega common, inside I will have e to the power plus j 2 omega and e to the power minus j 2 omega, which will be twice cos of 2 omega. Next, if I pair this and this, it will be plus, I will write these terms here. If I take 2 common, it will be e to the power, I will call this as x 1, okay, x 1 omega. This is the first part. e to the power minus j omega plus e to the power minus j 3 omega that gives me 2 into 2 into e to the power minus j 2 omega. Once again I take e to the power minus j 2 omega common. So, it will be e to the power plus j omega e to the power minus j omega which will be twice cos of that 2 I have taken out. So, cos of omega okay. and thirdly it was 3 into cosine of sorry 3 into e to the power minus j 2 omega. So, if I add all the three terms x e to the power j omega will be e to the power minus j 2 omega common and I get inside the bracket twice cosine 2 omega plus minus plus 4 cos omega plus or minus, minus, minus 3 that is all. Now, this is a real quantity. So, this gives me only the phase. So, the phase theta omega will be minus 2 omega. Okay. It is not 90 degrees, it is just minus 2 omega. Last time there was a little slip. Now, if I have the sequence instead of starting from here sequence starting at this point that is it is symmetric about the origin. Then this will be starting with 3 into e to the power 0 and this will be 2 into e to the power minus j omega, this will be 2 into e to the power plus j omega. So, this term that is you are giving a shift of the origin. So, this term will be multiplied by e to the power plus j 2 omega and hence there would not be any angle associated with this. So, for a symmetric sequence for a symmetric sequence if the symmetry is about the origin
then we get angle theta is equal to 0 all right. Next, the third part was if you remember we have asked you to compute minus pi to plus pi x omega d omega. Now, what is this 1 by 2 pi into this? If you remember x n is equal to 1 by 2 pi minus pi to plus pi x omega e to the power j omega n d omega. Is that all right? Now, if I put n is equal to 0, this becomes just integral of x omega d omega. Is that all right? So, that is equal to x 0. So, what is this integral equal to 2 pi into x 0? And you have been asked to compute sorry, we have been asked to compute this integral. So, that will be x 0. So, that is equal to into 2 pi. Okay. So, that is equal to minus 2 pi. Is that all right? x 0 is minus 1. Next, it was what is the fourth part? X at pi. All right. If I put here x at pi, yes. How much is it? If you put omega is equal to pi, what do you get from the series? What do you get from the series? x n e to the power minus j pi n, is it not? And that is equal to, basically you are just alternately changing the sign, e to the power minus j pi n means when n is odd, it is pi 3 pi 5 pi, when n is even, it will be minus j 2 pi and that is equal to 1. So, you just alternately change the signs. So, the original sequence that was given minus 1 plus 2 into minus 1 minus 3 plus 2 into minus 1 minus 1. Is that all right? So, that is equal to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 2 minus 1. So, that is minus 9. So, the last one that we discussed, we did not discuss that was asked was x omega squared d omega. Okay. Now, from Percival's theorem that is the energy content of the signal, whether you represent the signal in the time domain or the frequency domain will be same and that is equal to square of the components, okay. summation of that in the continuous domain it is integral. So, that is will uh, this one will be equal to minus 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 2 squared plus 1, 4 plus 1 5 plus 5 10 plus 9 19. Okay. Now, this is actually 1 by this is equal to this into 2 pi. Okay. So, 19 into 2 pi that is 38 pi. Percival's theorem states that this is equal to 2 pi into sigma x n squared. All right. Now, let us take up another interesting problem before we go over to uh, the relationship you are given x n, this is a low pass filter
you are having an adder here and this is y m. This low pass, low pass filter is having the characteristics like this minus pi to minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 it is 1 and this is the characteristics of h e to the power g omega. Okay. An ideal low pass filter. What will be y n like if I give say a delta input? You are giving an impulse input, what will be the output? Okay. So, let us take this as some w n. So, this is minus 1 to the power n into w n and this is w n. Okay. Now, what will be w e to the power j omega? It will be product of the two frequency transforms. Frequency transform of delta n is 1. Okay. So, if I call that as input x into h e to the power and this is equal to 1. So, it will be h e to the power j omega. Okay. What will be the frequency transform of this? This is already known same as h. What will be the frequency transform of this? If I call that as say some w dashed n then what, what is the transform of w dashed? Now, minus 1 to the power n I can write as e to the power minus j pi n is it not into w n the frequency transform of this is it not? I am taking frequency transform of w dash 10 which is nothing but w n into e to the power minus j pi n. Okay. So, in the frequency domain if I multiply any function x or say f by e to the power minus some quantity j into something then what is the transform of that product it will be the original function shifted by j pi all right so this is nothing but h because w is equal to h for a delta input so h e to the power j omega minus pi so what will be y e to the power j omega it is nothing but w plus w dashed okay so this is h plus h e to the power j omega minus pi correct me if i'm wrong is that all right? And how much is this? If h omega is extending from minus pi by 2 plus pi by 2 and after that, after that it is all 0, this is omega, this is 1, then just take any value, say omega is equal to a little above pi by 2. All right. Then this will be zero, and this will be one. You just see what is W dashed. If this is h e to the power j omega, what will be the shape of e to the power j omega minus pi? 
it will start from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Is that all right? It will be like this. So, if I add them together, it will be always 1. Okay. So, what will be y n? Uh, this plus this. Okay. If I keep on changing this periodic and it is coming continuously as 1. So, y n is delta n. So, if I have an ideal low pass filter of ideal low pass filter of a band minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2, then this kind of arrangement will give me an overall transfer function unity. I give delta n input, delta n is the output. Okay. Uh, okay, before we take up any more example, let us we will take up some more interesting examples later on. Let us get the relationship between the continuous domain and discrete domain signals. In real life, signals are signals are continuous mostly, all right. Whether it is speech, or it may be the temperature recorded, or maybe the voltage of a particular uh, node, you record anything that is basically analog or mm. continuous. Now you discretize it in the time domain, and then you process it in a computer. So for processing again the discrete signal depending on the memory available we discretize in magnitude okay representing it by some bits so when we are doing that it requires some time we discretize in magnitude that means we measure them at discrete intervals of time Then this value is to be represented in the digital form. So, it will take some time depending on the length of the memory. So, we allow that time. So, till that time it is kept on hold at this value. All right. So, we also require a sample and hold circuit. The device by which we discretize it is analog to digital converter or we call it ADC. Then similarly from the discrete value we translate them into continuous value we call it digital to analog conversion and apart from that we require whole circuits. These are not the only elements. When we are getting a signal and we are using that hold element, then we are getting the sampled value like this. Okay. These values are processed And then we are doing some kind of processing depending on your requirement and then you are getting the output converted into continuous domain signal. While doing that what you are getting is a discrete even though it is a continuous function, but it is having sharp bends like this. Okay. You have to smoothen it. All right. so, at the final stage you have a smoothing filter. So, after processing digital processing you have a DAC and then you have to have a 
smoothing filter. Okay, smoothing filter. We also call it reconstruction filter. All right, or reconstruction filter. Now, before feeding it to AD converter, we also take care of the signal, we will very soon see what should be the condition for uh, the signal for discretizing. Before feeding it, we also pre filter it or we call it anti aliasing filter. So, the signal is fed here, pass through an anti aliasing filter or pre filter and then we discretize it, then we process it, then again we go for analog conversion, then we have smoothing filter. Okay. these two filters are in the analog domain and this is the digital domain, this filter is in the digital domain. So, what is the most fundamental condition for processing a signal in the with the help of a computer? What should be the condition for anti aliasing filter, because rest of them are very standard one anti aliasing filter. Now, the signal discrete signal x n is nothing but x analog, we are computing the values at regular intervals of t. Okay. So, I will write like this and the sampling frequency is 1 by t in the radian domain 2 pi into f s that is 2 pi by t, so many radians per second. What will be its frequency transform? It is minus infinity to plus infinity x a t a to the power minus j omega t d t. Okay. And what is the discrete domain representation? It will be <coughs> summation x n this we are writing in the discrete domain. We want to establish a relationship between this and this. Okay. We want to establish a relation between this and this. Now, x a and t I can represent in two ways. I should put this bracket. Now, this can be shown as a multiplication of the function x t by a function f t by a function f t which is basically a string of delta function with a period t is it not. That means, ok. 
okay. If I call this as periodic x p j omega, okay, this is a periodic function. So, if I take the Fourier transform of this, I call this as so this multiplied by x t, I call this as x p t, all right. When we are looking at it as a product of this periodic function and the function x t, okay, I call it x p t. What is the Fourier transform of this? This is x p j omega, that is Fourier transform of x p t. Okay. Now, this we can look at it as there are two ways of looking at it. One is a summation x a n t, x a n t is a magnitude okay, minus e to the power j n omega is it not? This small omega I am writing as omega n t t that is at only those times if you are taking it. So, it can be written like this and the other way it will be okay. Uh, let me write for f t first f t is this will discuss later on in details. See if I have a delta function a string of delta functions and so on. this is summation delta n minus n minus okay i can write this also in the discrete domain huh? so the transform of this e to the power j I am just writing this as k t. Okay. I can write f t like this, is it not? Whenever t is equal to k t, I take only discrete values. Okay. Whenever t becomes equal to this, then it will be giving me a, a pulse. So, f t can be written like this this is f t which is nothing but summation of this. Okay. So, 1 upon t summation e to the power j omega s k t in terms of sampling frequency. All right. So, correspondingly this is f t. So, correspondingly if f t is such a function x p j omega will be 1 by t summation x a j omega minus k omega s. Okay. Translation any function is multiplied by e to the power some exponential function e to the power j this thing will be having in the frequency domain a shift of k into omega s. Okay. One of those properties of Fourier transform 
shifting property. So, it is nothing but a periodic function all right a summation summation of a function which is shifted by omega s 2 omega s 3 omega s and so on is that all right. What does it mean? Suppose x a is a function like this in the analog domain. What is x a j omega minus omega s minus 2 omega s minus 3 omega s. So, this is omega s again around that omega s you are having a replica of this is it not. Again after 2 omega s we are having a replica of this similarly on this side. Okay. Is it not? So, if I have uh, corresponding to this, the say the time function is like this, this is the original time signal, all right, whose Fourier transform will be this, okay, and the entire set corresponds to this one. If I scale it down by 1 by t that represents basically x p j omega. So, if this was x then this whole thing scaled by a factor 1 by t will be x p this entire set is x p is that all right. So, this this one corresponds to the Fourier transform of this and this one is 1 by t times to multiply by a factor 1 by t that will give me x p. Okay. How have you got it? If I consider in the time domain you are multiplying x t by what? By a chain of delta function all right. There is a train of pulses impulses of magnitude 1 and you are multiplying by that. Okay. So, in the frequency domain you can take their products all right. So, what is the product? One is this one to be multiplied by no x ohm see if I have a delta function periodically appearing then what will be its Fourier transform also a train of pulses in the frequency domain. If this is f p t t then f omega f p omega will also be pulses okay train of pulses like this sorry so this one i can put j omega this one is convolved with this you convolve just x t x j omega with these pulses you will get this is it not convolution of one pulse with this what with will give me the same function and with a train of pulses you will get repetition of this is that clear. 
So, in the time domain when we are multiplying in the frequency dom domain we will be taking convolution of the two frequency domain representations and that is how we, we have got it. And we have seen it also from the summation expression. Now, question comes while taking convolution this has got nothing to do with the with your sampling as such. It is depending on the type of signal that you are getting. So, this is the base band of the signal original signal analog signal is having this much of bandwidth minus omega m to plus omega m. Okay. You can call it omega m by 2 also. Okay. Now, if this spacing is sufficient, this is omega s, then how much is this omega s minus omega m by 2. Okay. So, if omega s minus omega in many books they write just minus omega m to plus omega m. Okay. That is the normal convention. So, let us also follow that omega s minus omega m should be greater than omega m. If I want clearly distinguishable forms, okay. that means omega s should be greater than twice omega m or omega m should be less than omega s by 2. That means, sampling frequency should be more than twice the maximum frequency that is present in the original continuous domain signal. This is the same theorem that we have already discussed sampling theorem, Nyquist sam sampling theorem or Shannon's sampling theorem. Now, if we have an overlap, if suppose this condition is violated, then it is like this, this is omega m and omega s is omega s by 2 is coming inside. and so on. So, now when you are taking the summation the overall sum will be like this. So, this is not a clear picture from here I cannot segregate the base band element all right that is that segment. Earlier when this was repeating with a distinct gap in between, I could have now used a low pass filter, I could have used a low pass filter and filter out this one. If you take the inversion, you will get the original analog time domain signal. That means, if you are given a discrete domain signal, if you take its Fourier transform, all right, if you pass it through a low pass filter, then again take inverse transform you get the analog signal. But now, if I have a low pass filter, I will be having a signal which is not a replica of the original signal, you see here there will be lot of error. Okay. So, to avoid this we impose this condition. Now, in reality you may not have a signal with a definite value of sigma m or the magnitude goes on diminishing, but at a very slow rate it is like this. So, somewhere we truncate it this frequency is ensured to be less than omega s by 2. Okay. 
then you get this is the base band and then over this you have another repetition and so on, but there is a separation. This is somewhat closer to the original signal than this distortion, because here because of the overlap even much before this here the distortion is only at the tail, only this portion is eliminated. Okay. But if it is like this then the other tail also comes in, so the corruption starts from here because the resultant is somewhere here you see somewhere here. So, the value gets corrupted even much before this value omega is by 2. Okay. So, the distortion is less if we do the pre filtering where we are restricting the band. Okay. Now, let us take an example, it will be very interesting to demonstrate the effect of sampling on signals. Suppose, we have x 1 t is equal to 10 cosine 2 pi into 100 t plus 30 sin 2 pi into 200 t minus 20 sin 2 pi into 400 t plus 15 cosine 2 pi into 600 t plus 15 sin 2 pi into 900 t plus 0 point sorry 5 cosine 2 pi into 1100 t. Suppose, we sample it at a frequency of 1 kilohertz, what will be the discrete domain representation of this signal? It will be 10 cosine 2 pi into 100 into t, 1 kilohertz is the sampling time. So, uh, sampling frequency. So, t is equal to 0, 0, 0,01 second. Okay. So, you put n into capital T. So, this will become 0 0.2 pi n plus 30 sin 0.4 pi n. Correct me if I am wrong, minus 20 sin 0 0.8 pi n plus 15 cosine. Now, this will become 1.2 pi n. Now, 1.2 pi I can always write as 2 pi minus 0 0.8 pi into n. Okay. So, 2 pi n minus 0 0.8 pi n cos of 2 pi minus 0 0.8 pi n. So, it will become 0.8 pi n. If you permit me to write in one step and then uh, where will it be uh, this one and then plus 15 sin 1.8 pi n 1.8 pi n. So, that can be written as 2 pi n minus 0 0.2 pi n. So, sin of this means minus 15 sin 0.2 pi n okay. plus 5 cos this is 2.2 .2. if I subtract 2 pi then it will become 0.2 pi n. Okay. So, check into 5, 5. So, 10 plus 5 15 cosine 0.2 pi n Okay. minus 15 sin 0.2 pi n 
then plus 30 sin 0.4 pi n again minus 20 sin 0.8 pi n plus 15 cosine 0.8 pi n. I can write this as this is 15 and 15. So, 15 root 2 cos and sin. So, cosine 0 0.2 pi n then is it plus 45 degrees or minus 45 degrees plus 5 by 4 is that all right. Then this and this okay, 30 I will write this first 30 sin 0.4 pi n and then minus 20 and 15 same frequency. So, this is 20 square plus 15 square under root 25 okay, plus 25 cosine cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So, cosine 0 0.8 pi n plus theta where tan theta is 20 by 15. Okay. So, I can write like this where tan theta is minus sorry plus 20 by 15 okay that's 4 by 3 now one more signal we take x2 t x2 t which will be 10 cosine which is different from this minus 30 sin 2 pi into 800 t minus 20 sin 2 pi into 400 t plus 15 cosine 2 pi into 1400 t plus 15 sin of 2 pi into 1100 t plus 5 cosine of 2 pi into 1900 t. Now, if I have a function like this, what will be x to n? Once again by the similar conversions, you will get 10 cosine this is 1800 into uh, uh, sorry 1800 into pi so that give you that will give you 1.8 pi so that is 0.2 pi 2 pi minus 0.2 pi cos of 2 pi minus theta is cos theta itself and then minus 30 into sin this is 1.6 pi. So, that will be plus 30 sin 0.4 pi n. Okay. Next 20 sin this is 800. So, 20 sin 0 0.8 pi. Okay, point eight pi plus fifteen cosine. This is two point eight. That's equal to point eight pi n plus fifteen into twenty two hundred. So this is actually minus. This was minus. I'm sorry. So this will become minus fifteen into sin 0.2 pi n plus 5 cos this one is 5 cos 0.2 pi n is that all right one is 900 the other one is 1900 but both of them are generating 0.2 pi n 
So, this is 10 plus 5 15 cosine 0 0.2 pi n you check with the previous example is it coming same plus 30 sin 0 0.4 pi n I leave it to you to complete this will come as same as x 1 now you change the sampling rate to 2 kilohertz you will find x 1 n is not equal to x 2 n or x 1 n can be equal to x 2 n. I ask you to verify for these two frequencies what will be the sample sequences x 1 n and x 2 n are they equal for some of these frequencies can you guess or are they different that means two signals might appear to be identical under a certain condition of sampling. They might be different at some other sampling rates. I want all of you to verify this by taking two different frequencies and once again translate the time domain description to continuous domain description to discrete domain description like this. Okay. Thank you very much. We shall take up some examples in the next class using the frequency transforms.